hack your ESXi and v, uh, vCenter servers while you can. Uh, yeah, this is pretty bad. Uh, CVE 21972. That's a big one. Uh, 9.8 is kind of high out of 10. Uh, yeah. So that is pretty bad. There's already uh, proof of concepts available on GitHub. And there is already a Metasploit module that has been made. And um, I'm assuming it works. I don't know. I haven't tried it. But uh, yeah, so that's fun. Uh, additionally, there was a, another one that is a, um, a heap overflow in ESXi servers. And that, from what I gathered, it seems like it's very similar to another one. It's in the same service. And I think, um, yeah, same service and everything. I'm pretty sure it's very close to uh, something that has been used in the past against or uh, in ransomware attacks. So that's pretty bad because uh, normally um, a ransomware attack will like move laterally throughout the network through like uh, active directory domains. But if they can get access to your ESXi servers, that's worse, potentially. Uh, and apparently there's at least 6,700 uh, publicly accessible devices that are vulnerable to some of these. That's bad. Nice. Um, yeah, you don't want to be on the, uh, the uh, receiving end of that. Uh, let's see, what else? So we got some new developments on the Excelion file transfer application attack. Did we go over these at all? I don't think I did. Okay, cool. I wasn't sure and I didn't really check. Um, so basically, there's been a couple of vulnerabilities in an old file transfer uh, suite that's been used against uh, a lot of pretty fairly big name companies. And uh, Mandiant slash FireEye just released a, a pretty solid report kind of linking them, but not like definitively saying, but very much hinting that it's probably Fin11. Um, data from that was leaked on the Clop Leak site. Pretty good. Good stuff. Um, yeah, that's pretty much that. Ah, and uh, so the interesting thing there, at least in my opinion, was that instead of like a typical ransomware attack, they were uh, the threat actors were able to leak the data or uh, steal the data and leak it if they didn't pay. But they didn't, from what I could gather, it didn't seem like they were able to actually encrypt the data. So it's not like a typical ransomware attack, but uh, they still like asked for demanded a ransom. Uh, looks like they were somewhat successful. Uh, what is this one? Lazy script, this is lazy scripter. A, a new advanced persistent threat was found by Malwarebytes. Uh, I thought this was kind of funny. So essentially it's, it's a group that has not written any of their own stuff, it seems, which is interesting. Um, yeah, it seems like a fool that's not very visible. Um, they're, they're tar they've been active since like 2018-ish, um, targeting through like job lures. Um, interestingly, they were targeting Canada, maybe? <laughs> Question mark? I don't know. Um, not really sure what Canada did to deserve that, but yeah, so that was that's an interesting read. That's a, a pretty long report, so link down below if you want to read that. It's pretty cool. And finally, uh, <laughs> Lazarus. Oh, good old Lazarus. They, uh, I, I would say they're back, but I don't think they ever really stopped. Uh, so they were discovered targeting the defense sector in mid-2020s, uh, or mid-2020-ish, give or take. Um, and some, some like malware was attributed to them. Pretty cool, pretty interesting stuff. Um, and this, uh, another lengthy but interesting report linked down below. Um, main attack vector, COVID-19 phishing emails with word macros. Hmm. I think Shannon might have mentioned that before. What do you think? Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, be on the lookout for maldocs. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I thought that was an interesting one. So if the user executes this malware without a command line parameter, the malware launches a legitimate calculator carrying a dark icon of the popular Avengers franchise. <laughs> Take that as you will. That's it for the news.
Jake. Jake. So we're gonna turn it over to Philip with 